record. I'm going to record. Got it. And record. If I can remember even where to record. Oh, there it is. Record to the computer. Okay. We are recording. Okay. So, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the vocal preparation for recording session, which is part of the Collective 2023 program. And as you can see, welcome to our collective kitchen. We're calling it our kitchen because uh, what we're going to be doing is creating a recipe. Okay. Yeah, you can see Susan there with her spatula. Uh, our recipe will be recommended ingredients that we can put together in order to properly prepare our voices for recording a song. But before we start, I'd like our chefs to introduce themselves, please. I'll start with my spatula. I'm Sue Talbot. I'm in Fort Myers, Florida, and uh, I found the collective in August of 2020 and joined the music team in November of 2020. And welcome to Collective College number two. <laughs> Thank you, Chef Susan. Uh, you're going to be called our sous chef. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that before. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's the worst joke of the day. In fact, that's the only joke of the day. <laughs> uh, and the other chef in the room is? I'm Debbie. I'm the pastry chef cake lover um I've, i'm having a well-earned cup up before um, we start cooking i've been on the music team since dover and um i don't know, even know when that was you i'm very impressed by your date knowledge sue um <laughs> in lockdown one of the lockdowns i joined um and who knew we thought it might be months and we're still here and it's amazing so um We'll be all be chipping in with things tonight, and I know Mike's going to keep us on task. Um, make sure we get everything covered. Okay, thank you, Chef Debbie, uh, and I'm Chef Mike. Um, sometimes I'm in the UK, sometimes in I'm in Germany. Uh, I'll let you try and guess. Okay, so it's great for you all to be here. Um, this is going to go out on YouTube, so I presume you'll be able to make comments when it goes out uh, and suggestions. Um, so let's make a start. Okay, so first a question. Um, singers in the collective will have been to many, many rehearsals over the last three years. Okay, and what is the one thing that singers expect to see at the beginning of every rehearsal? It's not a tricky question. Any answers? Come on, Chef Sue. A warm up. Fantastic. You're on the ball. Well done. Okay. Love them or dislike them. They are a necessary part of every singing rehearsal. So, why are they a necessary part of every singing rehearsal? Any offers? Chef Debbie. Um, so that you don't damage your voice by over singing when you're not warmed up. Um, so that you're focused on what you're doing. And, and if it's a physical warm up, so that your breathing and your posture are in a good place. Absolutely. Spot on, spot on. You wouldn't dream of going out doing physical exercise, sort of sport or anything without warming up your, mis uh, warming up your muscles. So it's exactly as Debbie said, you do the same before you kind of sing. Um, it's always a bit strange then, isn't it? That sometimes we neglect this vocal preparation before we do our recordings, especially when he's when you think that we invest hours and hours learning songs, rehearsing songs, and trying to be the best we can, uh, we then go and fail at the final hurdle by not warming our voices up before we record. So let's have a think. Um, as we think about this vocal preparation for recording, this recipe for success, um, I'd like to look at some ingredients which you definitely do not want. Do definitely don't want. Okay. Anybody got any ideas? Chef Debbie. Um, well, there are some in what I would call environmental factors. So noise within your house or noise around you. 
There's inevitably somebody digging up the road the moment you decide to start um, recording. Um, so you need to be aware of those because they're not in the room with you, but they're certainly being imported into your recording. Um, so, yeah, that would be my first thought. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. I live next to um, somebody who is a dog walker. It's a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> Any any others? Any others? Yeah, Chef Sue. Any other kind of stresses? You know, your it, it, what's happening in your body, what's happening in your mind, you know, all the things we worry about as soon as we press that record button. Yeah, that's it. Stress, 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 and stress. Yeah, kick it out. Don't bring it into the kitchen. Okay, leave it somewhere else. Okay. So um, let's have a look at what I'm going to call foundation ingredients, okay, which underpin all the other ingredients that we're going to use. Um, it's a bit like cooking oil, okay. Cooking oil you find in all cooking recipes. Okay, so can we think of any foundation ingredients that we would use? I'm sure there's lots of them. Chef Dewey. I'm going to mention one that I'm not very good at. It may not be the top of the list, but I'm sure it must be on there somewhere. And that's hydration. And I know that I should be drinking more in at least in the day before I start to record, if not the week before. So I know what the right thing to do is. I can't say that I always do it myself. Um, but if I was an organized person, I'd have one of those bottles that says, you know, this is what you should drink in a day and, and pick that up there. Look, Sue's got something. And if it's attractive as well, like yours is, it might make you want to do it. Um, and while I'm on, can I just say another one that's personal to me? And that's dairy. Um, if I can cut down on my dairy in the days before, or the time before, um, it makes me a lot less, I'm going to use a word which isn't very nice, a lot less phlegmy. Um, because that's one of my problems when I'm singing is that I can't get rid of that phlegm. And I'll come to that later. Well, I'll do something... <laughs> Perhaps a bit, you know, close to the metal. <laughs> right. Okay. So that could be sort of, you know, diet, wouldn't it? Part of it could. Yes. Yeah. So it's different it's things for different people. Yeah. We all need. We all need a good diet. Okay. <laughs> chef Sue. Sue Chef. Uh, this is one that I struggle with. Sleep. Get enough rest. You know, that's important. It's if your body's your instrument, you kind of have to take care of it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So we've got uh, hydration, which is paramount okay always amazes me number of people who've got a chorus without a bottle of water um good diet quality sleep anything else oh yeah exercise exercise yeah. yeah exercise exercise just makes you feel an awful lot better a lot more alive we know what it's like when we don't get enough uh, we just feel sort of very lethargic okay um, Any more? Well, here's an exercise trick, kind of. A lot of people, including me, say, I just don't have time. I don't have time to exercise. And so I've been, I've read over and over again that while an hour of solid exercise is great, if you don't have an hour, perhaps you can find 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes at lunch, and 10 minutes when you get home in the afternoon if you're a working person. And every minute that you do something does add up. So if you don't have a solid amount of time, give yourself a pat on the back. If you get five minutes in a couple times a day and maybe add a minute every day until eventually you'll find a block of time. Yeah, fab tip. I like that, fab tip. Um, how about mindfulness? There's a word we hear a lot these days, okay. Okay feeling good up here all right what's going on all right um another good one i think that we should have in this foundation ingredient something which uh, i think chef sue will look at later on over to you chef sue what will that be well we're going to be we have to be realize that there's a lot of things that go together in a kitchen when you're cooking you know and and when and now since we're singing in our kitchen like you know we have fish and chips and we have, you know, cookies and milk, and we have singing and breathing. Thank you. 
yeah good yeah. breathing Sing techniques without breathing yeah yeah good breathing techniques uh and we know very well that uh day in day out we only really use shallow breathing all right um, whereas if you are if you're a practicer of yoga you will know very well that in fact um you know you actually use as much of your lungs as you possibly can all right shallow breathing isn't particularly good all right we should try and use full capacity of our lungs. Great. I think that's a load. I think we've got about six there. Um, and uh, if you're watching this video uh, and you've got any more, shove them in the chat. Okay. And we'll have a, we'll have a look. We'll add them to the recipe. Okay. So we haven't really got a lot of time to discuss any of those in great detail. Okay. But I think what we should do is uh, we should agree that those are really necessary to be healthy. And we all like to be healthy. And we don't sing very well if we're not healthy. Okay, so we've got those foundation ingredients in place. Uh, let's look at building on them with other ingredients. So we'll call these um, additional ingredients. Okay, so uh, what other things do you normally do then to prepare your voice? What's the first thing you normally do, hopefully? before you record. Debbie? I do some kind of build up to a vocal warm up. So start with humming and var maybe. Is this what you mean? Is this what you were? Uh, that's in, that's before in that. there, but it wouldn't be the first thing that I would recommend because, you know, I might be sort of a bit, a bit stiff or a bit tense. Um, I'd want to do something else first. Um, I think you want to do a physical warm-up. I think really you've got to sort of get rid of the tension um, and get this sorted out up here. So I think a short, gentle, relevant physical exercise, I think, would be the first one. Okay, it doesn't have to last half an hour or anything like that, but um, a short one and gentle, all right, and gentle. So, um, okay, why don't we have a look at a short, a short one? Um, I'm going to pay complete tribute to Jenny Savory, all right, because she's got a fantastic little uh, routine on the collective uh, members Facebook page. Type in Jenny Savory and it'll probably come up. Okay, uh, and I've adapted a few things. Uh, so thank you, Jenny Savory, for this. So let, let's just have a quick look. I'm gonna stand up, move my chair. And of course my head will disappear completely. Your whole body, there you go. There you go. There you go. All right. Okay. So are you going to join in, chefs? You know what? I'm going to join in seated if that's okay. That's and I'm okay. going to try to course, uh, yeah. We're used remember to remember rehearsals, aren't we? Yeah, we used yeah, to have good rehearsals. posture even if I'm seated. So Yeah, exactly. All right. Okay. So um, we'll just show what the routine is like. Okay. So, for instance, if you put your arms out with your thumbs up. Okay. And breathe in through the nose and bring your arms upwards. Feel your rib cage expanding and stretch over to the right gently and stretch over to the left. Now we're all aware that we always do these things gently. Okay, come back. Okay, and breathe out as you bring your arms down. Okay, so we'll do that one more time. Breathe in. Through the nose. Right. Left. Back to the center and bring your arms down, breathing out. Okay. We're all familiar with shoulder rolls, gentle shoulder rolls, forwards, backwards. We're just uh, getting rid of any tension. Okay, anything that feels a bit stiff. Okay, uh, we can bring our arms out to the side. One of mine's disappeared. <laughs> I do have two arms. <laughs> Stretch them out to the side, so somebody's got hold of them, all right? Okay, okay, breathe in and out as you bring your arms down. Let's do that again. So, arms out, breathe in and bringing your arms down okay right so 
let's have a look at the neck. So just gently tilt the neck over to the right. Okay, and you're feeling a lot of stretch here. So you've got to do that gently, otherwise you're going to pull something. Come back and do the same on the other side. Okay, now when you tilt your neck upwards, sorry, your chin upwards, open your mouth slightly. You do that so you don't get a lot of tension here and then drop your chin gently to your chest. And you would do that a few times, okay? You do that a few times. Look left. And gently look right. Okay, and then just relax your jaw and do a diagonal stretch to your shoulder. Gently bring it back and a diagonal stretch to the other shoulder. Okay. Okay, interlink the fingers so the palms are facing away from you. And that should round your back as you breathe in. That should stretch out your back and breathe out. So you do that a few times. And then interlink the fingers at the back so your palms are facing, facing your back. Breathe in and your chest will expand and breathe out and do that a few times. Okay, we mustn't forget the face muscles. Okay, thanks to Heather Hurley, we will all be doing this forever and ever. Okay, so um, I do this quite gently actually because I nearly <laughs> Nearly pulled a muscle in my cheek once by doing it so fast. So I'm going to do it so, well, not so gently, but gently. So big face. I heard, did you hear that crack? I heard a crack. Small face. Big face. Full face. Small face. And something that Jenny Savory likes to do, which is kiss to the left. Sorry, that's the right. Kiss to the right kiss up and i can't kiss down to save my life okay so that's sort of loosening all this up okay loosening all this up so last thing just give yourself a bit of a shake and make sure you are aligned all right make sure you're aligned whether you're sitting or whether you're standing make sure you're aligned look where your head is make sure your music's not up here Okay, because you're creasing this in the back of the neck. So make sure you're in the perfect alignment. And I don't know how long that took. What was that? About five minutes? You probably do it as probably five minutes, something like that. Okay, so <laughs> over to Chef. Are you? <laughs> Where am I? Where am I? <laughs> you kind of disappeared. That was very That's, interesting. Yeah. As long as I haven't fallen in the sink, I'm all right. There we go. That's right. You go down the disposal. That would be terrible. Yeah. Um, okay. Right. Chef Sue. Sue Chef. Over to that's you. me. I'm the Sue Chef. So what I'm going to talk about today is, is breath. And not the kind of breath that you take when you're singing, but the kind of breath you take when you want to kind of center yourself and be calm and be ready for an activity like singing or recording or really anything that you have to do where you might get a little anxious. And so what I want you to do right now is just think about it and think about how you feel inside. You might wanna close your eyes to do this. Think about on a, on a scale of one to 10, how peaceful and calm do you feel right now inside? And just, just remember that number, it's not a big deal. If you forget it, it's okay, but just think about that, okay? Because I know a lot of us have um, very active brains. You can open your eyes, you know, now, but very active brains, and we're always thinking of everything. Like even in this moment, when we're doing this recording for Collective College, 
I have something thawing on the refrigerator for dinner and I'm expecting a phone call and we're having our roof replaced and you know, your brain, boop, 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 it just goes. So when we're going to do a recording or anytime we're going to sing, we want to make sure that we're calm and centered. And this is an exercise that doesn't take very long. And I didn't invent it. It's, um, you can call it box breathing or square breathing. It's used in a, in a lot of different trainings and I will be talking you through it. And all you're gonna do is breathe, but you're gonna breathe in a little bit of a mindful way. So the reason it's called, I call it box breathing is we breathe in for four seconds, breathe in. We hold that breath in gently for four seconds. We breathe out for four seconds. And then we hold that empty feeling for four seconds and then we do it again. So if you count the seconds, that's only 16 seconds. You do it four times, it's a minute. Okay, so I will ask you to breathe and I'll count and I'll keep track. You can close your eyes or you can keep them open, whatever works for you. And look at that, there's a phone ringing in my house. I think I'll hang up. Should have turned that off before we got started. Didn't even think about it. I think I'll unplug it. Bye-bye. There we go. That's a good thing to remember when you're recording. Glad it happened now. Okay, so here we go. The first thing you're going to do is breathe out and empty your lungs if you can. So just breathe out with a sigh. And I'll give you an example before you start. You breathe in. Two, three, four, hold. Two, three, four, breathe out. Two, three, four, and then hold it empty. Two, three, four. It's pretty simple. I'm going to keep track with a pencil so I don't lose count. And here we go. Breathe out. Yes, Debbie. Does it matter whether you breathe in and out through your nose or your mouth for this? Well, I would say that because our even though we breathe in our in through our mouth when we sing, I like to breathe in and I've been taught that breathing in through your nose for an exercise like this is better because your nose filters the air where your mouth doesn't. So, I would say breathe in through your nose. Hold and then if you want to breathe out through your mouth you can or if you want to breathe out through your nose you can as well. Okay. But obviously we know that when we're singing, we're always breathing in and out through our mouths, unless we have a long time, a long rest, and then we can breathe however we want. But it's a little bit different when we're doing an exercise for relaxing. So I would say definitely breathe in through your nose. If you want to breathe out with your mouth, you can, whatever works for you. That's a good question. Thanks for asking it. So here we go on number one, exhale if you can, however you want to, because you have to breathe out before you can breathe in. <laughs> Last time I checked. So breathe out and breathe in, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, and hold empty, two, three, four, Inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, in, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, Exhale, two, three, four, hold empty, two, three, four, and one more in, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, empty, two, breathe out, three, four, and hold that, two, three, Four, and now you can just breathe normally. But before you do anything else, think about how you feel on the inside. Was there anything on your mind during that 
minute, it was only about a minute that was bothering you or, or were you just really in the moment thinking about breathing and holding your breath? For me, it always calms me down when I do that. Yeah, Mike, go ahead. Yeah, I was definitely in in the breathing, basically. I, you yeah. know, it's a bit like it's a bit like you know when you're doing yoga. All right, the 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 breath is where you have to be. Yeah, and it cancels everything else out. Okay, right. Um, that's uh, yeah, perfect, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Yeah, Deb, what about you? I was trying not to cough. I thought this would not be a good moment to cough. This would shatter the moment. Um, <laughs> I was pleased about that. Um, the hardest thing for me is the hold, the hold empty. Because I was thinking, how is she going to make this square when it's in, out, in, out? Surely that, yeah. So the hold empty, I think, is the, the most unusual state for us, isn't it? Because we're mm -hmm. usually noticeably breathing in or noticeably breathing out, but not usually holding empty. Right. Right. Yeah. And there's, and, and you know, if that one doesn't work for you, there's another breathing exercise that I can show you just once. It's called a three, four, five. And you breathe in for three, you hold for four, and you exhale for five. And then you breathe in for three. And let's try that one time. And, and, the, and this is more like singing because we always take a quick breath and then we're singing for much longer. So that's our exhale. So we're always breathing in sometimes on one and then exhaling for 27. It feels like when we're in a choral situation, especially acapella music, we don't get to breathe when we want to. So if you want to do it, let's try that one time. I will, I'll, I'll guide you through it. So you're going to breathe. Here we go. You're going to exhale and breathe in two, three, hold two, three, Four, exhale, four, three, two, one, breathe, two, one, two, three, hold, two, three, four, exhale, five, four, three, two, one. So you can do it m different ways to do breath. So that that will sometimes help me calm down. You can do it when you're in a traffic jam. If you're behind a car that, you know, you don't like, you can do it. If you have trouble sleeping at night, you can use this in your in a stressful, if you're in a stress, stressful situation in, pu in public and no one has to even know you're doing it because you don't have to close your eyes. You can just take 16 seconds internally to calm yourself down. So. Fantastic. Fantastic. Actually, I do remember you doing that in rehearsal. Uh, and I did tell my girlfriend about it because she has, she she has to sit in meetings for sometimes three hours. Uh, <laughs> and I said, just try this, and she did, and it worked. She said, oh, I was so more relaxed and less stressed. <laughs> Nobody knows it's like a secret weapon, you know. <laughs> so, you can just do it whenever you need it. Yeah. It's it's, it's um, a it's a, something to put in your toolkit. That's all. Absolutely right. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Sue. That's absolutely fantastic. Okay, um, moving on. Okay, um, SOVT. SOVT. Um, you've definitely heard that before. If you haven't, you've been on the moon or somewhere like that. Um, Semi-occluded vocal tract. Okay. Um, again, I'm going to give a big shout out, big, big shout out to Rhiannon, Tanya and Claire um chefs you may remember the education session they did on sobt and it was around the time of you will be found okay it goes right the way back to uh, you will be found so um if anybody's out there who hasn't seen it it's still available recommend you watch it because it is one of the most brilliant education sessions on how to use sobt Okay, uh, what we use it for is to warm up our voices, make the sound free from tension, and also we use it for resetting our voices after singing or speaking. If you remember in rehearsals, very often if you've sung three or four times, music team will tell you to rest, all right? Don't continue to sing and just to bubble, all right? And that's SOVT. And what you're actually doing is you're resting your voice, you're resetting your voice, okay? So how do we do it? Well, if you've never seen it before, of course you need a bottle of water. 
And I do recommend these very small little bottles, which they give you on planes these days. Okay, and you need a straw. And I have got a metal one, finally found a metal one. And you notice, perhaps, if you can see it, can you see I've got a piece of tape wrapped around my straw? Okay, well that tape is, is uh, the top of the tape is one inch from the bottom of the straw. Because your glass has got to be, your bottle has got to be like half full of water and your straw should be in the water about one inch. Okay, and I can never tell where one inch is or 2.54 centimeters if you were if you're metric of course um uh but the tape i can see where the tape is and i can see where it is in relation to the water okay so you put the straw uh the straw can be any size really uh if you haven't got a straw um the casing of a biro does work but the trouble is i find biros are too small but um anyway and all you've got to do is to blow gently and quietly to produce some consistent bubbles. I say gently and I say quietly. So if you're finding the water is coming out of the glass or out of the bottle, you're blowing far too hard, all right? You don't want any volcanoes. The other thing is you don't want your lips tightly round the straw, okay? You don't want that. You don't want that because what you're actually doing is creating tension in your mouth here and your tongue and that's the last thing you want okay so just gently okay and take a breath when you need okay just blow You notice it's a consistent, yeah, it's a consistent flow of air. Okay, that's what you're trying to actually do. Okay, consistent flow of air. Um, you can also pinch your nose if you can, if you can do both, to see whether you're actually losing any air through your nose. If you find it doesn't make any difference, then you're fine. You don't have to pinch your nose, but I know it's a bit difficult to do that and hold the bottle. Um, right. Find a comfortable note to hum. Okay, comfortable note to hum. And what you're going to do is you're going to hum and bubble. Okay, so you're going to bubble that note. Again, consistent airflow. Okay, so it's a consistent airflow that you're looking for. Um, and you can do some gentle sirens upwards and downwards. Okay, so the reason why it works is that um, by using the straw, the mouth is partially closed okay and what this does is increases the back pressure which is reflected at the lips back to the vocal folds um, which helps them vibrate with more ease and less effort so what you're doing is creating something called better vocal fold closure All right so SOVT can also uh, prevent a breathy sound um, helps to relax the muscles around the vocal folds so there's no tension. Uh, helps you to reset your voice, like we've said, and it also has been used a lot when your voice is tired. Um, and it just helps with airflow consistency. Um, also helps, if you know where your register break is, um, bubbling over the register break by increasing the airflow a little bit, okay, will help prepare you for when you hit that register break the little gap as you as you sing up upwards um also will help with choppy sound and it'll help you produce something which is more legato so um the sort of exercises you can do okay exercises you can do um you can actually uh, go from high to low five four three two one Go up, uh, you know, a 
a semi tail. So do four or five of those. Um, sirens, try and include every note. Uh, as I'm a bass, I'm going to go from C to C. I'm not really particularly very good at sirens, but hmm, we'll see. Okay, um, when you reach the break in your, your voice, okay, try and increase the airflow a little bit, but use your abdominal muscles to support your breath as well. Uh, you can do steps, one, five, one. And go up in semitones. That sort of thing. Um, and if you if you watch Claire Reed and Tanya's education, the one of the funniest things they try and do is to try and yodel. I don't know whether you remember the yodel, and it was an absolutely hilarious thing to do. I mean, Claire's a professional singer, so she could do it without the, um, obviously without the bubbling, but I can't even go. So you do one eight, one eight, one eight fast. Uh, it's a disaster as far as I'm concerned. I just can't do it. I'd have to do it very slowly. Okay, could you do it? Yeah. That's not even close. I'm not going to embarrass myself anymore. Um, and I think particularly, yeah, I find really uh, good is to increase, use it for increasing your range. So if you do like one, three, five, eight, ten, eight, five, three, one. Uh, so for a bass, if I start on C, then the ten is the E. And for a male, um, uh, for a, a low bass singer, that's, that's again roughly where, where I'm going to finish, okay? And you can try going up in the semitone, but uh, I think you, uh, if you're a bass, I think you're going to have to start a little bit further, uh, lower further down. So you can tell I'm really struggling, and I would have to really um, pay a little bit of attention to where I actually start with that one. Um, okay, so yes, Debbie. But the good thing is, although you're struggling, you're not straining your voice because of the way in which you're doing it, presumably. Exactly. And what I've been thinking about the whole time you were doing that is that so often we say to members, bubble through this part or bubble through a whole song if you're feeling it, that your voice needs a rest. And I want to say and hear, big up the the members who I see do this regularly. And it's not a weakness in a singer to do this. This is actually a, um, a valuable um, tool to protect your voice. So people like Cal Gas, Sue Priestley and Kath Tyler do this regularly. And I see them on the screen. They never make a fuss about it, but all of a sudden you'll see, they'll just pick up their thing and just get on with it. And I think that's really, really brave of them to do that because the temptation is to say, oh, I'm here to sing. I'm going to carry on singing. Somebody's going to say, why is that person doing that? Well, yeah, I'm yeah. good I for them. That's, yeah, I think that's and I'm sorry I didn't point. bring mine. Yeah, I, I think that's an excellent point. It is not a sign of weakness using it. It's a sign of strength. Okay. Mm. Uh, and Debbie's really, really spot on with that. Okay. Um, so uh, the only thing I would like to say now is that when you've got a piece of music in front of you i'm just going to share a screen for a minute so if we're looking at uh what's this this is for good isn't it can you see that guys is that all right can you see that 
Okay. Um, for basses, this was this was um, this was quite a good song. It, it, um, sorry, it was a brilliant song. But uh, as far as the notes are concerned, it was fit, fairly accessible to basses without any problem until we got to bar seventy one, and of course, right down here at the end eighty six. So this bar seventy one, you're approaching this. Okay, you know this is going to be a killer if you're a low bass singer because you're going to go up into an E flat here, go up to an E flat. So, like, the, um, uh, you know, d don't concentrate on just bubbling through the whole song. There may be sections in it for which you know you are stressed out about and you know that you've really got to prepare your voice for. So that bit there, okay. What I would suggest you do is you come back several bars and you actually bubble through these bars at the beginning here and bubble into this and do that several times. So you might actually bubble from Comet Pull, to, uh, Comet Pull from Orbit, okay? So you bubble this and you bubble this and you bubble that. And then you go back and you bubble this and you, and you, you do that three times, say, and then bubble and then sing this, okay? See if you can then sing this and see how your voice is actually improving. Because let's face it, if you can't sing this after you're bubbling it with quality, then don't record it, okay? Because you're wasting your time. You need to actually wait, wait a bit and see what's see what's going on. Um, and the other one I uh, just mentioned, you will be found because I think this is the most difficult song for low bass singers of the whole lot that we've ever had. Because when we got to, where is it? When you don't feel strong enough to stand, you can reach out, reach out your hand and oh, oh, and then we get into this. Look at this. We've got D sharps. So these D sharps, yeah, these are D sharps, D sharps. And this was so high, so high, so high for low bass singers. So again, you know this is coming. So bubble in the approach. Bubble the approach and bubble into this. Do exactly the same as I said on the previous song. You know, prepare your voice by SOVT for that. Okay. Don't just bubble through the whole song. Bubble the bits which you know are going to actually cause you stress. Okay. Right. So, Susan. I was thinking of something when you were talking about that, and that is... Um... When you know there's a note that's challenging coming up, especially if it's a high note, prepare your the inside of your mouth and your space by breathing for the highest note you're gonna have to sing. So in, 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 in that measure 71, that breath before it would have been a breath that you're gonna reach that highest note. So you so you lift more, you breathe more, and you're prepared for it. You know, always when you're when you're singing the notes that are a little challenging, breathe ahead of time. Well, think ahead of time and take a breath for that specific note, even though it might be a couple notes away. And then the um, SOVT is also a really good way to know if you're breathing from the right place. Because, Mike, I noticed, you know, your shoulders were down the whole time. You're bubbling and you're breathing and you didn't I didn't see anything. So obviously your abdomen, your diaphragm was moving to take a breath in. And, you know, if you're doing the SOVT and you're, you can look in a mirror, what you do want is to, to look like this, not. Yeah, exactly. Because it's real easy. Unconsciously we breathe that way where, and we don't even know it, but your shoulders were completely in, they weren't moving. So you could tell you were breathing correctly and, and you can feel it and be aware of it because a lot of this stuff we do, nobody does it wrong on purpose. We all make, we don't realize we're doing something that we could do it better until we get told, so. Yeah, that is so true. That is so true. Good, um, that's a good observation. I'm glad I was doing it properly. Um, oh yeah, they weren't moving at all. You were just getting air in and out and it was like, wow, I he's not Tanya, doing any of that yeah, stuff. I think Tanya used to describe it as zipping up your abdominal muscles yeah because um you know when you breathe it's not necessary to <gasps> do that you know what you're actually doing is you it's um you don't breathe from the diaphragm well 
your diaphragm, okay, you know, it, it's, it's the muscles which actually enable air to flow into you, into your lungs, you see, by, you know, by zipping. Um, right, okay. Um, where are we? Debbie, have you got anything that you would wish, you wish to add? Any ingredients? Well, well, as usual, none of my stuff is very technical. Um, I'm a singer, but I don't read music and I, I watch things go up and down and I listen to stuff. So mine is very, um, in a way, sort of lighthearted. Um, and it's things like preparing your room. It's amazing how much difference that makes. I live in a really old house, which was built in the 1700s. And the walls are various thicknesses and the windows are different and the reveals of the windows are different. So I can record a song upstairs and record it downstairs and it's completely different. When I'm upstairs, I have to close curtains. I do things like if I open the wardrobe, the density of the clothes makes a difference because I think the sound pings off the wardrobe doors, but it doesn't ping off the clothes. So it absorbs it all. And that's very easy for me to do without having to redistribute stuff. And also, I think I've said this to people before, my phone that records me sits within a very furry teddy bear. So again, it deadens the sound around them. And he's he's like a sort of, well, he, he was never meant to hold a mobile phone, but he does. And, and he's quite old too. Um, so it's simple things like softening any hard surfaces that you can um, just make a, a massive difference. And, and don't over listen to yourself back because I, I hear people say, I've listened 30 times and I'm still recording. And I would say, just please don't do that to yourself. Um, in fact, sometimes if you think it's gone well, it probably has. Um, so just leave it alone. Um, I won't do the ex extreme snoring, but I will say that, you know, when you make that pig noise, that when you're snorting, if you can do that very deeply over and over again, it loosens your whatever's going on inside. And I say Buda Bruin is a I think she's a Babs judge now. And she was in Avalon Quartet and she taught me how to do this because she knows I'm asthmatic. She knows I'm quite a phlegmy person and I do need to cut down on my dairy before I sing. Um, and she gave me this tip and she said it sounds absolutely revolting because you are literally loosening all the phlegm that's in your system. But boy, does it work. Um, so if you're one of those people, um, you know, you know what I mean by extreme snoring and snorting like a pig. Just do lots of it. <laughs> it loosens you up. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Thank you, Debbie. That's, that's all right. fantastic. My pleasure. OK, right. So um, I think I think we've got the recipe. Um, well, everything that we have brought anyway. So uh, if you're watching this out there and you've got some other things that you think should be added to the recipe, then put them in the chat below um, and we'll have a read. Uh, and hopefully uh, we'll be able to make the recipe available to collective college uh, singers and collective singers. Okay, uh, we'll try and get that organized by the end of the weekend. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to find, you know, the education session that I uh, said about from Claire, Ree and Tanya, because it really is worth a watch. Um, hopefully we can find the link for that. So uh, thanks for watching this. Okay. Um, you've stuck with us for a good 50 minutes. Uh, I'd like to say a massive thank you to our chefs, Chef Debbie. Thank you, Debbie. And our sous chef, Chef Sue. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, you've been great, um, and uh, I hope you've all found it interesting and uh, hope to see you in a collective college session. Um, there's lots and lots going on. So, um, yeah, enjoy, and thanks for joining us. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, bye. Bye -bye. Thank you Head Chef Mike. <laughs> Thank you.